Hi YouTubers and maths lovers alike, we're here back with another maths challenge. Now if you've never seen one of these before, I will go through roughly how they work, but these are given to school children in the UK education system, and they're pretty difficult. They're given to the top mathematicians in each year group, so thereabouts, and we're doing, of the three, the hardest one of the regular three. There are harder ones, but you've got to kind of qualify for them and go further down the line, and they're much more difficult. So we're going to give this a go. Uh, it takes 90 minutes. This is a senior math challenge. It takes 90 minutes, you can see up there. And they're going to be 25 questions, no calculators, you're just allowed a pen and a ruler. Uh, but no apologies, you're not allowed a ruler, you're not allowed, a, you're allowed a straight edge though. And it's multiple choice, but there are penalties for guessing. So the scoring rules are down here, we get 25 marks at the start of the competition. And we get no marks if uh, we don't answer a question, that's fine. We get four marks if we get it right, and we lose a mark if we get it wrong. So we're not going to guess. Realistically, only if you can narrow it down definitely to between two options is it worth guessing, in my opinion, because they're very good at giving you good wrong answers as we go. I'll be talking through my thoughts, and I'm going to do the best I can to stick to uh, 90 minutes if I can. What time are we on now? Okay, so we're just going to jump right into it. And this is given to 16 to 18 year old pupils in uh, the system, the people, the top A level mathematicians. Right, question one, what is 2015 squared subtract 2016 times 2014? Um, well, I just know this one. Um, it's going to be one. And I'm going to try and explain why. There's a couple of ways of doing it. You could you could work them out, and that would take time. Generally, th there will be a quick way. You could work out what 2015 squared is, and then 2016 times 2014. Or you could realise that uh, this is a difference of two squares. This is 2015 plus 1 multiplied by 2015 subtract 1, which simplifies to 2015 squared subtract 1 squared. And so this is just going to be this, but one smaller. Um, so it's going to be yeah, 1 when you take it off it. The other way you can think about it is you could work out... Uh, 10 squared, subtract 9 times 11 and work out that it works the same thing. 10 squared is 100, 9 times 11 is 99, that's 1. And you could do 4 squared, subtract 3 times 5, uh, that's 16, that's 15. So you can see it doesn't matter what these numbers are, you're going to get 1 either way. What is the sum of all the solutions for the equation 6x equals 150 over x? Alright, so we're just going to solve this. You're going to get an x squared. If you multiply through by x, you're going to get 6x squared equals 150. You're going to get x squared is... Um, oh, I'm being stupid. 25. And so you're going to get x equals plus or minus 5. So it's just going to be 0. You've got to be careful that negative 5 will work as well as a solution. When Louise had her first car, 50 litres of petrol cost £40. When she filled up the other day, she noticed that 40 litres of petrol cost £50. By approximately what percentage has the cost of petrol increased over this time? All right, so we're looking for the cost. So but, uh, so one litre initially costs 40 divided by 50 or 0.8 pounds and now 40 litres of petrol cost 50 pounds so one litre costs 50 divided by 40 which is one pound 25 and so we're looking for the increase what percentage increase is that to that apologies all the way around what percentage increase is it 0.8 to 1.25 well a 10 percent increase is eight and the difference is 45 so you're looking for About 50%, actually. It's a bit less than 50%, so these other ones seem quite high. Am I, am I doing something wrong there? By what, what percentage is the cost of petrol increased over this time? It used to be 80p, it's now... A 50% increase would be £1.20, wouldn't it? Yeah, I, I think it's 50%. It's 50, apologies. It's 50 and a bit, so it's actually closer to 56, isn't it? I'm being stupid, that's why I'm wrong. Not 50. Uh, 
a 60% increase would be £1.28. So 56% is as close as we can get. It's a good thing I rechecked that. In the diagram, the small circle touches the larger circle and also passes through its centre. What fraction of the area of the larger circle is outside of the smaller circle? Uh, well, if this is x, then the radius of the, the radius of the small one is two x, and so the area of the large one, I'll call it big A is going to be 2x squared pi and the area of the small one i think it's going to be three quarters and the area of the small one we'll call it little a which is going to be x squared pi uh, which is 4x squared pi x squared pi the larger one is four times bigger than the smaller one so it's going to be three quarters a quarter of the large circles made up by the small circle the three quarters is all this bit here. The integer n is the mean, the three numbers, 17, 23, and 2n. What is the sum of the digits of n? All right, so we're just going to set up an equation here. The mean is worked out by adding all the numbers together and dividing by how many there are. So we're going to do 17 plus 23 plus 2n divided by 3, because that's three numbers, equals... N. So we're going to go 17 plus 23 plus 2n equals 3n. So 17 plus 23 is 40 equals n. So 4 plus 0 is 4. For the sum of the digits of n. All right. If you want to have a go at these, what you need to do is pause it at this point or after I've read it out. And then you have a go at yourself, and then you see you check if you see if you get the same answer as me. I will be marking it all at the very end. And if I make a mistake as I'm going through, well, I just won't get full marks. And I generally don't get full marks in these. They're quite hard at the end of them. The numbers 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10 are to be placed, one in each of the circles in the diagram, so that the sum of the numbers in each pair touching the circles is a prime number. Number 5 is placed on the top circle. Which numbers are placed in the shaded circle? Okay, so... 5, that could be 6, uh, 5 and 7 is not prime, 5 and 8 is prime, 5 and 9 isn't, 5 and 10 isn't, so that's got to be 8. So 5 has gone, 6 is gone, 8 has gone. 8 can't go with 7, because that gets 15. 8 can go with 9, but it can't go with 10, so that's to be 9. 6 can go with 7, and then they can both go with 10, so it's 10. Nice, there was only one option for the first two, really. All right, which of the following has the largest value? All right, we're going to just divide these. A half divided by three quarters is the same as saying a half times four thirds, which that is going to be um, two thirds. 1 divided by 2 thirds divided by 4. Well, 2 thirds divided by 4 is 2 twelfths. 1 divided by 2 twelfths is 12 tooths or 6. A half divided by 3 is a sixth. Divided by 4 is a 24th. It looks like it's going to be B. Uh, so just looking at the denominator, 2 divided by 3 quarters is the same as 8 thirds, and then 1 divided by 8 thirds is 3 eighths. 1 divided by 2 thirds is 3 halves, 3 halves divided by 4 is also 3 eighths. So it's going to be B. And we'll just double check B because the rest are all fractional. 2 thirds divided by 4, 2 twelfths, or 1 sixth. And then 1 divided by 6, i.e. how many sixths in 1? Six, that makes sense. The diagram shows eight small squares. Six of these squares are to be shaded so that the shaded squares form the net of the cube. In how many different ways can this be done? Well, I know the net of a cube can't have four together. Um, so you have to shade... You have to shade at least one of these in 
the one of them, but it can't be that one. So it has to be one of the other three. Okay. So my guess is it's going to be six. You can't shade that one in because you cut the thing in half. You can't shade that one in because you cut it in half. You can't shade that one in you cut it in half. It's got to be one of these three, at least. And you can't have both of these because when because these three these three have to be there and when they wrap round these two will be in the same place they'll fold into the same gap so it has to be one of these three coupled with one of these two so there are three of these and two of these and the combinations if you've got three things and two things is just multiply them it's going to be six i believe Now my my job is just to check that they all work. I'm just going to check one specific situation that if we get rid of that one and that one, does it work? It's got to because that would give you five. If that wasn't allowed, that would be five. I'm pretty sure it's six. Does that work as a cube? I think it does, yes. You've got the four down the middle, and then two that get the top and the bottom of the cube. Four down the middle will get that way. Yeah, so you've got to keep one of the, yeah, you've got to keep one of these two, because that gets you the top of the cube, and you've got to keep one of these two, because that gets you the bottom. And can it be done? Yes, and you can have both of these two as well, so that does work, yeah. Yeah, that's a visual. Some people find that hard. Ah, that's a visualization problem, I think. Uh, four different straight lines are drawn on a flat piece of paper. The number of points where two or more lines meet is counted. Hi, Vic. Feel free to help if you'd like to. Problem straight lines drawn on a flat piece of paper. The number of points where two or more lines is in text is counted, which is the following could not be the number of such points. Four different straight lines. It could be parallel. Parallel. So if you've got four parallel, that will be none. As soon as one of them becomes non-parallel, it will hit the other three. So they could all cross at the same point. Oops, that's a really bad drawing. So one is possible. Could they cross at two points? I'm not sure they can cross at two points. Because so, so you either you can do zero, and as soon as you deviate from that, you've got at least three, unless you start crossing at the same point. If they all cross at the same point, you get one has to be because the rest are trivial. I'm just working out. I know I can do three. I know I can do four. Uh, can you do two? So if you have... That's one. There's no way to put another line so it costs us to just one more point. Yeah, I think you can't do two. Uh, Ewan says, yeah, you need four lines, though. Yeah, but if line three crosses one and two, it will also cross four. They, they, these are, these um, straight lines will be, um, straight lines will be infinitely long here. I'm just not drawing infinitely long lines. So what Ewan's saying is that you could have that. But this line here, this line here will eventually cross this line down here and those lines up there. So I don't think you can do two. So I'm going to say two. It doesn't, but it's just a math thing. It doesn't, yeah, it doesn't say infinite length. Um, um, it might say line segments otherwise. I think the, the um, from doing lots of these questions before, straight lines don't end.
Uh, what's the case for five? Um, yeah, well, Vix, Vix worked five out. The positive integers n is between one and twenty. So two parallel and two not. So two parallel and then two not. There's five. Yeah, so we can we can do the others. Um but we can't do two as long as the lines are infinite. If they weren't infinite, they were all, they, they would all be possible. So that's another way of thinking about it. If they weren't, if they could end, you could do all of them. The positive integer n is between one and twenty. Millie adds up all the integers from one to n inclusive. Millie adds all the integers for n plus one to twenty inclusives. Inclusive. The totals are the same. What is the value of n? All right. Oh, am I just going to have to work some stuff out here? Do I know what the 20th triangle number is? I don't. So the sum, well, this is what we can do. The sum of all the numbers from 1 to 20 is 21 times 10. So it's going to be 210. The way I've got that is I've had 20 and 1, 19 and 2, 18 and 3, 17 and 4. And you get 10 pairings of 21. So the sum is 210. So we need 1 to n to add up to 105. Um, so we've got, I'm just going to count one, three, six. These are triangle numbers now. These are just the sum of the first n numbers 10, 15, 21, uh, 27, 36, 45, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 55. That's 10, 66, 78. 91, 105, that's 14. Yep. So there was a famous story about Gauss was, uh, well, it, was it was like in kindergarten, he was six years old or something, and he was very bright, so his teacher just wanted to give him a menial task, and the teacher was asking him to add up the numbers one to a thousand, um, and he did it like that, using this technique, and when he was six rather than sitting there counting them up. It was um, one of Gauss's famous stories. Gauss is a, Friedrich Gauss is a famous mathematician. Rahid had a large number of cubic building blocks, each block a side length, four, six, or 10. Rahid makes little towers built from three blocks stacked on top of each other. How many different heights of the tower can he make? Oh, so we just, so, so four, six, or ten. We only care about the height. So whichever way around you put one of the blocks, you are, one of those three digits is going to be the height. So I think it'll be four, six, or ten, depending on which way around you stack the cube. So we could have so there are how many ways are there of of selecting these three? There are there are nine different ways of picking these. You know, four, 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 six, four, six, four, four, well, so on. There's nine different combinations of pairings of this, but some of them will be the same height. So we're just going to work them out. How many different heights of towers? We can have four, 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 six, four, four, ten, four, six, ten, four, six, six, four, ten, ten. And all the combinations of that four in it. So you've got six, 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 ten. Six, ten, ten. And then all the combinations without six in it as well. So that's just ten, ten, and ten. And so we're just going to count how many different ways of doing it. There's the nine different ways of doing it. But some of these will probably have the same height. So we're just going to do in a different color pen. We're going to write down the heights. So 12, 14, 18, 20. Uh, 16, 24, 18, so there's our duplicate, uh, 22, 26, and 30. So nine, there are nine ways of doing it, but one of them is duplicated, so there are eight different heights to the tower. 
Right. All right, now we're starting to get to the slightly tougher ones because we've got alphas and betas involved. The circle touches the sides of triangle PQR. You have 10 ways. Have I missed one? Oh, I have 10 ways. Thank you. Yeah, you are, you are fine. There are 10 different ways of doing it. Which I don't know what I missed then. I duplicated one. I'll just double check. I can't have duplicated one. Yeah, so there are nine different totals we can get. Thank you, Ewan. I thought... Yeah. All right. Am I being silly if I missed one? Four, four, four. Six, six, six. Ten, ten, ten. Four, four, six. Four, four, ten. Four, six, six. Six, six, ten. And then one of each. Oh, um, yeah, I didn't count that one. The one of each. For some reason. Yeah. Thank you, Ewan. That is a mistake I would have made. A circle touches the sides of triangle PQR at the points S, T, and U are shown. So this is the uh, circumscribe. The largest looks like the largest circle you can fit inside a triangle. Um, which of the following gives gamma in terms of alpha and beta? Well. Uh, this is just circle theorems, so using circle theorems, that's also uh, gamma, that's also gamma, and that is 180 minus alpha plus beta. So in that triangle, we can say that 180 equals 180 minus alpha minus beta plus gamma plus gamma. That gets you zero equals minus alpha plus beta plus two gamma, and therefore should be negative, and that should be alpha plus beta over two equals gamma. So uh, it's A, option A. Yeah, this is the, uh, if from memory, this is this is the alternate segment theorem. If you've got a triangle inscribed in a circle where the points are on the edge, this angle is the same as the angles at the opposite side of the triangle if you've got tangents involved. Um, so whatever this, whatever this one is, is the same as this one and this one, so on. And whatever this one is, is the same as that one and that one. The Knave of Hearts tells only the truth on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays, and Thursdays. He tells only lies on all the other days. The Knave of Diamonds tells only the truth on Friday, Saturdays, and Sundays, and Mondays. He tells only lies on the other days. On one day last week, they both said, Yes, sir. <laughs> Yesterday I told lies. <sighs> oh. Which day of the week was that? Well, one of them's telling the truth. Because... Uh, one of them's telling the truth on those days and one of them's telling the truth on those days they both tell the truth on Mondays um, and so one of them is telling the truth there um, so yesterday I told lies which means that it is the first day of their truth telling so it has to be the knave of hearts on Monday because he's telling this, one of them's telling the truth. Yes, they're told lies because the Knave of Hearts only goes from lies to truth on a Monday. Um, and then the Knave of Diamonds has to be a Friday if that's true. And then one of these will contradict each other. Uh, so I think it's Fridays because. They both tell the truth on Mondays, and they, they can't both be telling the truth there. So I think it's Friday. Yes, uh, no, this is... A... <laughs> One day last week, they both said, yes, they told lies, and which day of the week was that? I think, I think this question is asking, what day have they said it, not what day did they tell lies? But I think they mean that the answer is Friday. The triangle shows an area of 88 square units. What is the value of y? So 
So call that. I'm just going to call it gamma because we've been using gamma today. So we can say that this might not be the right way of doing it. Half times 10 times 22 times sine of gamma equals 88. Half AB sine C. Because if, if, if gamma is a nice number, we can work out why using the cosine rule. Um, 10 times 22 is 220. Half of that is 110. So 110 times sine is 88. Hmm. Sine gamma is 88 over 110, which is 8 over Divide through by 11, you get 8 tenths on 0.8. And 0.8 is not a nice trigonometric function, so there might be another way of doing this. If we had a calculator, we could just use the cosine rule, but I don't know what the cosine of... Oh, hang on. If, ah, uh, hang on, so we know that length there is eight, because that's how you get eight tenths. Oh, we knew that, N did we know that anyway? Eight times, we might have known that anyway, eight times 22 halved. Yeah, we knew that anyway from, <laughs> which is just from the area of the triangles, 88. We need that anyway. Yeah. Uh, okay, so that doesn't help us. At least we did anything wrong. Uh, if that's 10 and that's 8, that is... Oh, here we go. 10, 8, 6 using Pythagorean triples, which means this length is 6 from 22 is 16. And then we can work out y using Pythagoras. So there we go. So y squared is 8 squared plus 16 squared. This was easier than we've made it. y squared equals 64 plus 216. No, nope, 16 squared. Two hundred fifty-six. So y squared is... Uh, 330, no, 320. The y is the square root of 320, which will simplify because there's a 32 there. So this is going to be 2 root 80, and that's going to be 4 root 20, and that's going to be 8 root 5. Yeah, I made that harder than it needed to be. Right, this is the last of the easy questions. They usually get harder after this bit, but the scoring for the senior doesn't change like it does for the junior or the intermediate. This is just gonna to continue to be four points a question for the whole paper. But after this one, they get tougher. So just a warning. I mean, they're getting tougher as we go through anyway. Two vases are cylindrical in shape. The larger vase has a diameter, 20 centimeters. The smaller vase has a diameter, 10 centimeters, and the height, 16. The large vase is partly filled with water and the empty smaller vase with the open end at the top is slowly pushed down into the water which flows over its rim. When the smaller vase is pushed right down, it is half full of water. What was the original depth of the water in the large vase? So we know Uh, the original height of this water will be a bit lower than it currently is, and it's currently at 16 centimetres. So we can already say that that's wrong and that's wrong, just based on we know the height of the smaller vase is 16. We know that the diameter of the large one is 20, and this is 10.
I'm guessing 12, and I'm guessing 12 from that question we did earlier. But we're just going to work out the volume of the water in total, I think. Uh, this is going to take a while. We're going to work out the volume of the water in total. And so the volume of the water in the small one, let's call that um, V1, and the volume of this, V2. And we add them together and then work backwards. I don't like this. I think it's 12. But it might not be, it could be 14. I don't think it's 10. All right, so the volume of V1 is going to be 10 squared pi times, and it's halfway up to 8. That's going to be 800 pi. Volume 2 is going to be um, the volume of all the water and the small vars. So, the, so basically, the volume of all all of this take away the volume of the small vars. So that's going to be uh, twenty squared pi times sixteen subtract sixteen hundred pi, which is the volume of the whole of the small vars. Because half the small vase is 800 pi. The V2 is um, 6400 pi take 1600 pi is uh, 4800 pi. So the volume of all the water is V1 plus V2 is going to be 5400 pi. And now what we've got to work out is how high would something be if that was its volume? So this is going to be uh, 5400 pi is 20 squared pi multiplied by some height that we don't know. And 20 squared is the, the radius of the uh, larger base. So 5400 pi is 20 squared, 400 pi times some height we don't know. How many fours in 54? Doesn't go, does it? 13.5. <laughs> oh, dear, I've done something wrong. I've done something wrong. Twenty squared is four hundred. I think if, if anything I've done wrong, it's put, probably getting a sixty-four hundred. So twenty squared is four hundred. Four hundred times sixteen is six thousand four hundred. Double that is that. So this is that eight hundred fifty five thousand six hundred eight hundred plus four thousand eight hundred is five thousand six hundred. So that's five six. That's five six. And how many 400s in 5,600 is 14 uh, equals h. So I, would, I was wrong with my guess of 12. All right, so I need to go into my other document because I can't do enough pages on the one I'm on. And now we're on the tough questions. Fanargs are either red, blue, or, and have two, three, or four heads. A group of six phenargs consisting of one of each possible form is made up to line made to line up such that no immediate neighbours are the same colour nor have the same number of heads. How many ways are they lining up from left to right? Well I'm gonna call them um, uh let's call them um, uh B two, B three, B four, and then red two, red three, and red four. Um, so each of them has three people they can't stand next to. Effectively here, you can't stand next to one on any of the same row or column as you. The B4 can't be on any of the other Bs or any of the 4s. 
So there's two people that B4 can go with. Same with R3. R3 can't go with B3 or R2 or R4. So you're almost into a forced position here. So if you go B2 first, there are two options for the next one. You can go R3, then you have to go B4, and now it's forced. B4 has to go R2, R2 has to go B3, and then R4. So the first choice is free. The second one, you've got one, two possibilities, and then after that, it's forced. So once you've picked the first person, you've got two choices for the second person. And then it's forced, I believe. We'll just try another one, starting with a different person. So we'll start with B3. Um, B3, so B3 you can go R2 or R4. Let's go R2. And now you're forced, because R2's only got one option left, which is B4. And then B4's only got one option left, which is R3. And R3 has to go B2 and then R4. So your first choice is free, so there's six possible first choices, and then your second choice, there are two possibilities, and after that, they're all forced, I believe. So I think there's only 12 ways of doing it. <clears throat> yeah, where's my drink gone? I did have a drink somewhere. <clears throat> I've been talking for, I don't know, half an hour? Yeah, just over half an hour, so let's get a drink. The diagram shows eight circles of two different sizes. The circles are arranged in concentric pairs. Concentric pairs just means sharing the same center. So the centers form a square. So that's your square. Each large circle touches one other large circle. That'll be the diagonally opposite one. And two smaller circles, which will be two to the left and right. The large circles are radius one. What is the radius of each smaller circle? Well, and what I'm going to do is look at this shape here. I'm just going to pull this triangle out. We've got this triangle here, which has come from there. We know that's one because that's the radius of a large circle. We know that's a right angle because it's the like. <sighs> triangle that's come from the square. Um, so that's got to be using Pythagoras, the square root of two, one squared plus one squared square rooted. Um, but we know that this length is also same as Ah, oh, there we go. So this overlap here, so I'm just going to use a different colour. You can see this overlap here. If this, this whole length is going to be 1, which is the large circle, plus 1, which is the other large circle, minus this overlap. So we know that 1 plus 1 minus the overlap, let's call it x, is root 2. So we know that 2 minus root 2 is x. That's this bit here x is 2 minus root 2 and so we know that the radius let's call it little r we know that 2r plus x also equals root 2 i'm making this far more complicated and so we know that 2r plus 2 minus root 2 equals root 2 so 2r equals Um, 2 root 2 minus 2, so r is root 2 minus 1. Uh, which is this one here. Is that what you got, Vic? I, uh, I don't quite get what you said. Uh, radius of 1 plus radius of 2 equals square root 2, no? Well, I've got an answer that I'm happy with. I don't think I did it in the cleanest way. 
But I've got an answer that's in the grid, so I'm going to go with that one. Uh, Vic seems to be good at everything, by the way. What's the largest integer k for whose square, k squared, is a factor of 10 factorial? Uh, okay, I think I've got this one. So what we're going to do, we're going to change 10 factorial into uh, into prime factors. So we're going to say this is 2 times 5 times 3 times 3 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 7 times 3 times 2 times 5 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 2 times 1. Line of the square is the radius of a small circle plus the radius of a big one. Yeah, that's a much cleaner way of doing it. Yeah, I was, I was, I overcomplicated that. What Vic said, and I imagine you spotted it, is that, that, um, this is one, and then this is what we're after, and the whole thing is root two, and then you could just work it from there. It's just going to be one minus, uh, root two minus one. I, I knew I was overcomplicating it, but sometimes you get you get fixed with a way that you know is going to work, even if it's not very elegant. So we're doing this, and then what we're going to do, we're going to count how many of each one we've got. So the one doesn't matter because one is a factor of everything. So we're going to count how many twos we've got. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, how many threes we've got? We've got one, two, three, four. How many fives have we got? We've got two. And how many sevens we've got? We've got one. Now, if you want a factor of this that is a square number, it has to have at most four twos, at most two threes, and at most one five, because when you square this, it will still divide into this. But you can't have any sevens, because if you square something with a seven in it, it won't get there. And we're just going to work out what this is. This is... 2 to the 4 is 8, 3 squared is 9, 72. 72 times 5 is 360. I believe it's 360. So if you square 360, you get a seventh of 10 factorial, which makes sense. I think there's something like how many, how, how many minutes in a week or something where you do 60 times 60 times 7 and you get 10 factorial or, or something something or maybe how many minutes in a week 60 minutes an hour I can't remember the exact uh, maths behind it but yeah I've seen that before three squares of range are shown so that their bases lie on a straight line also the corners P Q and R lie on a straight line sorry the base is on straight line, also the corners are so that is a straight line. The middle square has side length that eight centimeters longer than the side of the smallest, and the larger square has side length of fifty. So that's 50. So if we say if we say that point there is the point zero zero and just try and work out that's going to be 8 and that's going to be x plus 8. No. That's going to be x. That's going to be x plus 8.
they're squares so this is we know this r is 50 tall but we, it's going to be oh hang on this is going to be Larger square side length is 50. 8 centimeters long and the smallest square. That's, that's that. That's x plus a, x. And that distance there is going to be 50 minus x plus 8. But more importantly, that distance is going to be 50 minus x. So we need, oh, here we go. It's just gradients, isn't it? We know that the gradient of PQ has got to be the same as the gradient of PR. So we know 8 over x has to equal... Fifty minus x over two x plus eight. Is that what you got? Yeah, I yeah, I'm I'm just gonna do it. Is have I done something wrong, or are you just doing it a different way? I think you're just doing QR, aren't you? I'm going to do PR, which is the same, I mean, it's the same thing. And you're going to get a quadratic here. You're going to get eight lots of 2x plus 8 equals 50x minus x squared. And we're just going to solve this quadratic, hopefully. 16x plus 64 equals 50x minus x squared. So we've got x squared. Uh, Take 34x plus 64 equals 0. And, yeah, it's going to be A, I think, because you're going to get x minus... I oh, know. Yeah, x minus 2, x minus 32. There we go, because 32, 2 is make 64. And the solution to this is x is 2 or x is 32. It's going to be that one there. At least we've got an answer that exists. The diagram does not support that answer, by the way. I do not think. <laughs> a square ink pad, a side, sides of length one, and it's covered in black ink and carefully placed in the middle of a piece of white paper. A square pad is then rotated 180 degrees about one of its corners, so that all of the pad remains in contact with the paper throughout the turn. Pad is then removed from the paper. What area of paper in centimeter squared is colored black? All right, so we've got a square, and you're going to rotate it around one corner. Let's say we're going that way. So at the end of 180 degrees, the square is going to be there. What areas have you gone over effectively? Because you've done like um like a snow angel sort of on the paper with and you're just kind of covering it. So I think this corner here gets the widest berth. And that is a semicircle. So I think you cover all of this semicircle plus that plus that, which is a full square. And the length of the radius of the semicircle is the diagonal of the square, which is, if the square is one by one, it's going to be root two. So the semicircle is going to be half times root two squared times pi. And then the two bits of the square left over get you one. And you add these together. So half of 2 squared times pi is just pi. And then 1. So I think it's just overall pi plus 
That's a lovely one. That's a lovely, lovely question. <laughs> I'm filming for YouTube, so just be careful of any fouler language than that. But yeah, bridge seems easy now. Um, so yeah, this is uh, this is the math challenge given to the best of the best to a 16 to 18 year old, 18 year olds in the UK. It's a senior math challenge. And what I will tell you is I've never taught anyone who's got full marks in these. And I don't always get, I mean, I rarely get full marks in these either. They're, they're really tough. They get, you know, they're for proper, proper math specialists. If you can get half marks at some of these, you do very well. We're on the last five questions now. The last five questions are going to be incredibly hard. I haven't got to one I haven't been able to do yet, but I imagine that's going to happen at some point. Um, the diagram shows a triangle X, Y, Z. The sides x, y, y, z, and x, z have lengths 2, 3, and 4. Let's just label that. So x, y is 2. Uh, y, z is 3, and x, z is 4. The lines a, m, b, p, m, q, and s, m, t are drawn parallel to the sides of the triangle x, y, z. So that A, P, Q, S, and B, T are of equal length. So A, P, so that length there is the same as that length and that length. What is the length of A, P? Well, it's the same as the others, isn't it? Hey, PJ. Hmm. I don't know how to start on this one. Well, these three, these three triangles are similar to their overall shape. Oh, right, okay. So they're similar to the overall shape. So if we call, I don't know if this is going to work, but the, the reason yeah, is because everything's parallel and the angles will be the same. So that angle will be the same as that angle and so on because of the parallel lines. And so, you know... There we go. So let's call the one we're after X. And I'm just going to deal with this one and this one, potentially, because I might only need to deal with two. Maybe. Oh, no, hang on. I feel like I'm on the verge of this now. There's some similarity here. So that's X, that's X, and that's X. But... This plus X plus this gets you to four. And so there's some similarity going all over, over the place. And that one plus X plus that one gets you three and so on. And then this one plus X plus that one gets you two. Oh, I, I can't see what to do here, but it's something to do with similarity. And because you've got two threes and fours in here, my guess is it's going to be B or C because that's, it feels like you're going to get some twelves in there. My guess, just from the numbers we've got in the question, is it's going to be something over 12 or 12 over something. My guess is it's B. It's going to be something over 12 because of the two, three, and four. I don't see how you get a five or a seven in terms of factors or multiples here. 
So uh, my guess is it's my guess is it's B. So I would be if I if I was doing this in a real thing and I had to end now, I would guess B. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back to it, assuming I still have time. I've got 35 minutes left to do five questions, so I might have time to come back to this. But it's something to do with similarity. I can't quite see where to start. But if someone wants to have a go at that while I'm doing the next question, be my guest. Oh, I hate functions. Ugh. Let f of x equal x plus root x squared plus 1 plus that. 1 over x minus root, root x squared plus 1. What is the value of f of 2015? Well, just from estimating it, so whatever x is, x squared plus 1 rooted is going to be a teeny bit more. It's going to be x and a bit. And then this is also going to be x and a bit. It's going to be a bit more than x. So this is going to be... two-ish and this is going to be negative so it's going to be one of these first three answers am i actually going to put 2015 in surely that can't be right by sub so f of it's so a function when x is 2015 means you're going to put 2015 in here and here and here and here and you know is 2016 a square number? I don't think it is, is it? 1008, 504. No, I don't think it is. 104, 252. 126. Twenty six, sixty three. No, it's not. It's not a square number. It's two thousand sixteen. So there's no way I'm going to be able to work this out. So let's have a go at trying to simplify this. A quick check to see if it's a square number. So basically, oh, and it wouldn't work anyway. I was doing the wrong calculation, but yeah. Um, so we're just going to try and simplify this. We're going to say this is x plus root x squared plus 1 multiplied by x minus x squared plus 1 rooted over plus 1 x minus so all I've done is multiply this bit by that over that to get the same denominator and what we're hoping for is for something to cancel out. So if you multiply the top brackets, you get... It's a difference of two squares. They're congruent. Congruent, no. Not conjugate. There we go. Got the word right. This is going to be x squared minus x squared plus 1 rooted squared plus 1 over x minus... But nothing cancels, does it? Oh, and the roots do. So you've got, oh, the numerator is going to be x squared minus x squared minus 1 plus 1 over x minus root x squared plus 1. So the denominator doesn't matter. The numerator is going to be 0, whatever x is. So, so f of x is just 0. It's just a fancy way of saying it. Oh, I hate functions. Sorry, I don't. I hate functions in these tests. <laughs> Given four different non-zero digits, it's possible to form 24 different four-digit numbers containing each of those four digits. What's the largest prime factor of the 24 numbers? Wow. Does it not matter what the numbers are? 
the sum of the 24 numbers. There are 24 different ways to arrange four digits if they're different. So you could have four digits A, B, C, and D. You've got A, B, C, D, A, B, D, C, A, D, C, B, and so on, A. There's 24 ways of doing that, and that's just uh, four factorial. You can have one of four digits in the first space, you can have one of three of the remaining digits in the second, one of two, and then one, so that's 24. So, and at the end we sum them up. Oh, hang on. So you're going to get digit A in the thousands column four times. You're going to have A, B, C, D, A, C, D, B, A, D. Well, you get the idea. Six times, sorry. Apologies, six times. You're going to have... Oh, 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 this is quite nice. If I'm adding up A, B, C, D to uh, uh, B, A, C, uh, D, C... For example, if I'm setting those two together, that is exactly the same as saying A, A, C, C plus B, B, D, D. And I can take that a step further. I can just say, yeah, I can just say that A will appear, yeah, A will appear in the thousands column and the hundreds column and the tens column and the units column six times b b b b six times c c c c six times d d d d six times and see so adding up six a plus six b plus six c plus six d well hang on this has 101 as a factor. A, A times 101 is A, 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 A. So I think it's going to be D. So I don't matter what the digits A are. It, a, 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 six of them, they're all multiples of 101. Yeah, A's, I mean, yeah. So, you, so what's Vic saying is you can say 6,000... A plus six thousand six hundred A plus sixty A plus six A. That's what that becomes. And then you can do the same with the Bs and Cs and Ds, but I think it's just gonna be hundred and one because all of these all twenty four numbers, if you rearrange them into different rows, they're gonna be multiples of hundred and one. I don't think they're going to be multiples of hundred and thirteen. Because I think 113 might have to depend what the various digits A, B, and C are. I am just going to go D. I'm pretty confident D works. That's the issue. Mm, but I'm not 100% sure it can't be E. What is the largest prime factor? Now, 113 is prime. It's just not a nice prime. I'm going to go D. I might be wrong. But I can't see what to do over there. And I've got an answer that I like. I just can't. It's not exhaustive. It's more of this works, but this could work as well. Because it's just a, it's not asking for which of these works. It says in which is the largest one. Right, Peter has 25 cards, each printed with a different integer from 1 to 25. He wishes to place n cards in a single row so that numbers on every adjacent pair of cards have a prime factor in common. What is the largest value of n for which this is possible? Well, you can't do 24, surely, because prime numbers are going to get you in. Prime numbers are going to have no common for. Oh, that's not true. Because you could have uh, 3 next to both 12 and 15, and 3 is prime. So 3 has some solutions. 7 has, 5 has 
10, 15, 20, 25. 7 has 14 and 21. But 11 only has 22. So if 11 was in your row, it has to be at the start. And if 13 was in your row and you've already got 11, it has to be at the end, which means you can't include any of the other larger prime numbers. Because you can go 11, 22, 2, so, 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 and so, and so, and so. Oh, and 13 just doesn't have another one, does it? So you can't have 13. So 11 you can have as long as it goes at the start. And you can't have 13 anywhere. So, because it has a prime factor in common. And you can't have 1 either. So we can't have 1 because 1 doesn't have any prime factors. You can't have 13. You can't have 17. You can't have 19. You can't have 23. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So already the most I can do, I think, is 20. So what we're going to try and do is do 20 to see if we get to a point where it's possible. I think I've already eliminated that one and that one. So we're going to start with 11 because we have to start our end with 11 if we're going to include it. So if we're going to get 20, 11 has to be one of ours. And then 11 has to go 22. And then 22, the only remaining factor 22 has is 2. And 2, you've got a free choice now. You've got a lot of choices with 2. So let's pick... Let's pick 14, 7, 21. Because that gets 7 out of the way. Because 7, if 7's in there, it has to go with 14 and 2 this way. Because if you don't get to 7 now, you can't get 7 in the game. 21 has to go to 3. And what numbers have we got? I should probably write these down. So I think this is, if, you, if 11 is a starting number, I think this is so far forced to get the most. If you go from any other number than 14 to 2, you never get 14 in the row. And you never get 21 in either, because you can't get 21 without 7. You can't get 7 without 14. All right, I'm going to read out what Vic's written. He said, this is for the previous question. Vic is also very good at maths. He said... Um, he said the sum of these is 6,666 times A plus B plus C plus D. So whatever A, B, C, and D are, your prime fact has to go into 6666. We know 101 goes into 6666. Um... A, B, and C, and D can't be bigger than 30. And since 113 is prime, it can't be written as P times Q or P and P. Yeah, you'd, you'd have to do one more check. What we're going to do, actually, is check that 113 doesn't go into this. Because if 113 goes into this, then we've got it wrong, haven't we? So none, none. Two, two, six, three, three, nine, four, five, Two, five, um, five, six, five, five, six, five. So it goes five times. Oh, six, 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 six is three times two times eleven times one hundred and one. Uh, so Vic's just prime factored this. He said that's three times two times eleven times one hundred and one. So we know that this has to be multiple of six, 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 and the highest prime factor of six, 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 six is that. And then this can't be high, can't be high enough to get you 213. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Well done, Vic. I, I knew I was right, I just couldn't prove it. <laughs> so what numbers have we got left? We've got four, five, six, eight. Um four, five, six, eight, nine. Right, the only way to get 9 in the game is to put 9 next. Because so you can go 9, 18, 6. I think. Uh, so we've got 4, 5, 8. Uh, 9, 10, 11, 12. 13, 
13, 14, 15, 16, 17, can't have 18, got 19, can't have 20, 21, got 22, got 23, can't have 24, 25. I don't like what I'm doing here, but <clears throat> from 6, we can go to um, just 24 and 12. If we go to 24, we can go... 4, 12, we can go 24, 12, 4. Oh, we haven't got 10 either. Do 10. So let's do 6, 24, 12, 4. So from 4, we can get to either 8 and 16 or to 20. I think it's very important to get to 20 because then we can get to 10, 5, and 25. So 4, we go to 20, and 20, we're not going to get 8 and 16 in the game because we've already used 2. So 20, you can go to 5, you can go to 10, 5, 25. 20, 5, 10, 25. So I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So I'm not doing it as efficiently as I can. There might be a more efficient way. Oh, uh, you can't. Oh, yes, four. Yes, it's not just factors and multiples of each other, is it? Prop. Yeah, four. So we can go eight, sixteen, twenty, and then from twenty we can go five, ten, twenty-five, fifteen. Yeah, we can get them all in, can't we? Yeah, because I was doing factors and multiples, but it wasn't. It's sharing prime factors. So I think this is 20. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So we've done 20. We've proved it can't be more. We're going to stop. Right. We have... How much time have we got left? We have 18 minutes left to do two questions. We should be fine. Uh, whether we do the questions or not is another matter. A function defined on the set of positive integers in such a way... Oh, no. I can't believe there's been two function questions. f of x multiplied by y is the same as f of x plus f of y for all x and y. It's known f of 10 is 14 and f of 40 is 20. So they have to be, x and y have to be positive integers. What is the value of f of 500? We can say that f of 10 is the same as saying f of 5 times 2 means that f of 5 plus f of 2 also equals 14. We can say that f of 20, 40, is the same as saying f of 10 times 4 is the same as saying f of 10, which we know is 14, plus f of 4. So we know that f of 4 equals 6. So we know that f of 4 equals 6. Or f of 2 plus f of 2 also equals 6. Okay. So we can say f of 500 is going to be... How many 40s in 500? It doesn't go, does it? We can say that's the same as saying f of 10. Yes, you're absolutely right. Oh, being stupid, f of 2 is 3. Uh, sorry, I missed that step, Vic. <laughs> so f of 10 plus f of 100. And we can say that's the same. We know f of 10, so we'll leave that. 
plus f of 100 can be written as f of 4, because we know that, plus f of 25. Oh, and we know f of 5 now, because if f of 2 is 3, then f of 5 is 11. So we can say this is the same as saying f of 10 plus f of 4 plus f of 5 plus f of 5. This is actually quite an easy last question. 50. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, uh, ah. That's 25, that's two. All right, so that's two. That's right, isn't it? 10 times two is 20, times five is 100, times five is 500, that works. So we've broken f of 500 down into four that we know from our previous workings out. And hopefully this gets us an answer in this grid. f of 10 is 14. f of two is three. f of five is 11, and f of five is 11. 14, 25, 36, 39 is a number we've got up the top. So we're going to take that. Before we mark it, we're going to go back to the one that I got stuck on. Have you, did you see this one, Vic? Have you got any ideas what to do? This is why I need people in chat to stop these stupid numerical errors. Where did I get F of 5? The very first... The very, uh, I got f of 5 from here, so you know f of 10 is 14, so you can split f of 10 into f of 5 plus f of 2 to get to still being 14. But f of 40 is how we worked out that f of 2 was 3, and if you know f of 2 is 3, you can say f of 5 is 11. And we just broke everything down into bits that we needed for later ones. Uh, this is the one I'm stuck with, I'm going to give myself 5 more minutes on it. Um, I, it's something to do with similarity, but I can't quite see what to do. If I was a guessing man, I'm going to be guessing one of these two, but my guess, my guess in my head is B. That is, that is my, that is my guess. Mainly because the denominator is 12, and if you're looking for, to get in denominators from the numbers 2, 3, and 4, 12 is the one you're more likely to get out of any of those. But I don't know why. So I've got that the three, these three triangles here are similar, as is this triangle here is similar, as is this triangle here. They're all similar to the overall triangle because of the parallel lines. The similarity going on all over the place. And we know that the three lengths here, AP, TAB, and SQ are X, but they're different X's according to the different similarities of the triangle. In the smaller triangle, it's the largest edge because the largest edge of the original was four. In the medium triangle, it's the middle edge. And if in the large triangles, it's a small edge. Yeah, I think so. I think, um, I, think I might pass on this because I can't see a clear way of doing it. Um, but I'm going to be a guessing man and I'm going to guess B. And I don't usually guess. Um, but my logic for guessing is that when you're trying to get factors and scale factors and stuff, to get a 15 or a 14, you often need a 5 or a 7 involved. 13 is prime, 11 is prime. So I'm going to guess B on the basis that I think if I start doing multiples of different fractions of things, I could get a 12, but I don't think I could get any of the others. So I'm going to call that a day. I'm quite tired. So we're going to mark it. So we're going to go back. And we're going to mark it. And we're going to see how many out of 125 we get. And uh, I've got answers somewhere. All right, so if you've got your marking boots on, get yourself your green pen, which is what I'm going to do. You whoop. And we're just going to mark it as we go. So if uh, I get it wrong, I'll have a look at the mark scheme to see what I should have done. I've just got a list of answers here. The so question one was D. Question two was A. Question three was B. I almost got that wrong. Question four was also B. Question five was A. Question six was E. 
Question seven was B. Question eight was D. Question nine was indeed B. Yeah, it's split into about, there's a lot of geometry there. I love geometry. It's geometry and number theory, my favorite areas of maths. Uh, 10 is D. I'm probably better at number theory, but I think geometry is more beautiful. 11 was C. So I would have got this wrong if it wasn't for someone in chat. Ethan, was it? Ewan, who, who told me what to do here. So I would have got that wrong. But we got that right as a group. 12 was A. 13 was E. 14 was also E. And 15 was C. So for the easy side of the paper, we got full marks. Let's have a look at the rest of it. Um, 16 was A. You're not good at geometry. I could give you an easier paper, PJ. I do, I do have some ones aimed at younger people, although there is geometry in there as well. Um, geometry is just lovely, though. 17 is C. They don't, in these, they don't have any calculus or anything like that. It's all, it's all nice maths. Nothing they need to calculate, and all of them have elegant solutions, nearly all of them. 18 was D. All right, we got this wrong. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, let's have a look at what we did, because I was quite confident with this one. Oh, I've just done my maths wrong. Oh, two to the four, so that's 16. I got eight. 16 times nine times five is 720. So everything I did was right, and I made a numerical mistake here. So I, I the method was completely right. I just did two to the power of four was eight times three squared is nine, and I, I didn't get a high enough answer, so yeah. So my method was right, but the answer was wrong. So, but no points for that. We lose a point for getting that wrong. 19 was A. 20, I quite like that one. That was quite nice. 20 was E. I also like that one. That was quite nice too. That's quite hard to visualize. Uh, 21 is C. So I, I'll have a look at how we do that in a second. Uh, there's a lot of them working out here. We'll do it. 22 is B. 23 is D. Well done, Vic. 24 is C. And 25 was also C. Eighty times nine. Yeah, I did. I did. I did it poorly. So we got question 21 wrong. It's one we didn't really know how to do. All of the triangles in the diagram are similar as they contain the same angles. So I'm, what I'm going to do is actually copy and paste what they've said underneath so I'm not just reading it out because it's... All right. So we... This is the full answer they've got. Uh, so what do I need to do? Uh, I've just give me a sec. Save. Um, uh, so I need to upload. Answer. Um, yeah, we uh, we've finished now, Rusty. All right, so all the triangles in the diagram are similar. They contain the same angles. We knew that. The sides of each triangle are therefore on the ratio of 2 to 3 to 4. We sort of knew that. First, consider triangle APM, the large one. Let AP equal X. So that AM equals 2X. Why is that the case? Oh, 
Yeah, okay. Yeah, this is the bit of logic we missed. Because this is the, this whole length is two and this is four, we know that relatively, whatever this is, this is twice as large. So if that's x, that's 2x there. Uh, now, considering triangle TBM as BT is also x, then BM is 4x over 3. And then considering this one, uh, apologies, 4x over 3. And then we know that overall this bottom length is made up of 4 plus 2x plus 4x over 3. So we can... So you get this equation here equals 4 and then we get 12 thirteenths from that. So we got it wrong. Oh well, that's quite nice actually. I just uh, I was I knew they were all similar, and I just couldn't see that step that if that is x then that is two x, which you need to see. But anyway, let's uh, get to a marking screen. So our score, our score was we started with twenty five. We got uh, twenty four questions right, and then we got one question wrong. It says negative one point. Four twenty fours is ninety six. 25, add 96, subtract 1 is 120 out of 125. Alright, well that's been, um, that's been the math challenge for the day. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you had a go at this yourself, put your score in the bottom. If you want me to do a specific year's one, let me know. I've now got them all the way back to 2000, sorry, 1999. So I can go quite far back. I'm planning to just work way back in order. And then when a new one comes out, do that one too. But otherwise, um, thanks for watching. I've been Steve. The chat's been chat. The chat's been ace. And I will see you soon.